Hi, this is Stephen E. Andrews, Outlaw Bookseller. Welcome to my channel again. And today we're going to look at a new book, which um, I've just managed to get a free copy of from the publisher, um, thanks to Terminal Press. And it's a lovely sunny mid-October day. Again, I'm wearing a T-shirt. It's ridiculously warm in the UK for this time of year. And we are, yeah, we're shooting in HD today, thanks to my cousin Neil for the new camera. Hope you get well soon, Neil. And um, I did do an unboxing video for this um, book the other day, but um, I decided not to use it because the picture quality was crap. Hopefully this will be a lot better. And um, it's a free copy I received of Deep Ends for this year. Deep Ends 2021, the Ballardian Anthology. Many thanks to my wonderful editor Rick McGrath and publisher at Terminal Press. And this is a trade paperback edition. I'm not in this one. Um, I was offered the opportunity, but I just find I can't write in lockdowns. And um, so I've just been spending the last few days leafing through it and um, digesting the contents. And um, he, Rick described this to me in an email as an oddball issue. And um, yeah, maybe it is, but it is J.G. Ballard. So, you know, every issue is oddball. But um, initially I could see what he meant. There's some really sort of, you know, beetle browed interesting stuff in this. So I'm going to talk you through it. I'll just show you the back cover, which is quite interesting. And I'll show you the front of the wrap as well. Marvellous. And um, even though I'm not in this one, um, Rick, Rick did me a um, got a special copy printed for me with my with my name in it, which is you know this is the sort of guy he is really, um, wonderful chap. So what have we got in um, in Deep Ends for this year? Well, <clears throat> it's a mixture again of fiction and non-fiction. Originally it was always non-fiction, of course. It's been fiction in the last few years, and we've got some familiar names in here, Ballardians that we know, love, and respect enormously. And I have to go straight to the first piece in here, which is um, part of David Pringle's wonderful J.G. Ballard chronology, which runs throughout this entire series. And this is exciting because David's gone backward in time to show us um, the chronology of Ballard's life from 1930 to 1955. And what's great about the chronologies that David does is he puts them into cultural and historical context by mentioning all sorts of other things which are going on in the world. So you can see how Ballard and the Ballardian worldview is reflected in the world we've seen and how relevant it is, was and continues to be, which is fantastic. Um, so this goes into intense detail about his childhood and adolescence in, um, you know, in the in China and it's just fantastic and even if you know about this stuff even if you've read a lot of Ballard you've read the autobiographical novels you've read John Baxter's book you've read lots about him and because there's lots of material out there it's still you know for even a hardcore jaded Ballard and it's still absolutely marvellous and and it's a huge part of the book David's really gone for it and you know obviously David was um was JG's archivist for years and he wrote the first ever monograph um on Ballard's, which I've got, which I've had for many, many years, but it takes up that much of the book. So it's a real treat. I always love reading them. And um, and this one was fantastic because it really sort of gets you looking at the detail of Ballard's early life and his questing nature and the things he tried before he became an SF writer. Fantastic. So well done, David. I mean, you're always a joy. So, um, you know, I can't say enough good about that. And um, looking at the other familiar names here, um, we have the marvellous Maxim Jakubowski, who, Jakubowski. Hi Max, hope you're okay out there. Um, and it's got all the things we love. Um, you know, Max is a well-known bookseller, publisher, editor, novelist. Um, and there's a great story here called The Ballardians, which is really funny. Um, and one thing I really like about um, Max's work in the, the Ballardian area is that he he, because you know he's he's sort of an expert on erotica and has edited lots of um, erotica anthologies. He does put lots of sex in, which which I think is great because there's a lot of Ballardian violence <laughs> out there in, in Ballard's. But there's there's not enough sex in my view. So um, you know he really goes in the erotic thing, and um, it's about this ship 
um, that goes off with a load of different Ballardians and they form factions, a bit like in High Rise. And um, it's just very quite tongue in cheek um, and it's very erotic and, and naughty and, um, and it's really, really good fun. I loved it. So that was great. Thanks for that, Max. That would really give me a few giggles. I'm not sure I was supposed to find it funny, but I found it really amusing and entertaining. And um, also on the sort of erotic side of thing, um, we also have an essay by the very wonderful poet, novelist and performance artist Jeremy Reed, who I never met. We corresponded back in the 90s. I wanted to get him to a bookshop in Swansea that I used to run and um, it never happened. Um, but um, I had some nice letters um, from Jeremy and I was reading his, his books, particularly at the time, um, especially Diamond Nebula, which had the working title of Bowie Ballard War, a wonderful science fiction novel. Um, published by Peter Owen and Jeremy's done this great essay in here on the homoerotics of Crash so it's about how um, <clears throat> Jeremy sees that as the sort of underpinning of the eroticism of Crash and I think he's got a point actually and it's great you know great essay very, un very uncompromising um, but you know when you look at Crash this is nothing that we haven't already seen and um, you know, we've got an alarm going off in the background, but I guess that's the contingency of science and the way it affects our lives. I always think with Ballardi and things that, of course, in fiction, they can be very dramatic. In our real lives, there's small irritations very often, but of course they're growing. I mean, like I say, look at the weather today is fantastic. Um, the drowned world, the drought, we are heading for environmental collapse, which makes this all the more relevant. So, so there you go. So there's some, some great familiar names. Just looking again, um, there's some wonderful um, visual and non-fiction material in here. There's a great piece by Rob Latham called Assassination Weapons, the Visual Culture of New Wave Science Fiction. Um, and I love that because I'm, I'm a new wave nut, really. And, um, and this is really good. And it's how about how New Worlds became more like an art magazine as it went on before it ended up as a paperback sort of a format um, type thing. Really, really good. And um, for those of you who, like me, are obsessed with the minutiae of New Wave SF, that's absolutely fantastic. And there's also a great piece in here um, by Rick Poino, who is a name where anybody's interested in design will know. And um, it's a Linear City, a field guide to the Ballardian buildings in the south of France. And it's text and photographs. And, and I love this because I'm not claiming I started a trend, but a few years ago in Deep Ends, I did a piece called Me, Capri, Bridget, Bardot, which was a reference to you, Coma, Marilyn Monroe from the Atrocity exhibition. And it was about how my Italian holidays in the Mediterranean were Ballardian. And I included one or two pictures like this as I stayed at one of those sort of supposedly faceless um, Hiltons. I'm a strange Ballardian and those things seem to be critiqued um, a lot by Ballardians. Uh, but it's obvious to me that Ballard loved them as much as question them. I'm the same. I love them. You know, I, I would, I like him, would, you know, I'd go and live on the med if I could. Um, so, yeah, so this is really, really great because it looks at the architectural detail and there's all sorts of references in there. Wonderful, wonderful pictures of builders to look at. Fantastic. So I'd move to Supercan tomorrow. So there's that. Um, there's lots of fiction, some which I haven't read yet. Um, some I have. And um, there's... Uh, there's a, a great piece by J.F. Lawrence from his Two Tales diptych in here, um, we, one of which is about called The School Run, which I really like because um, it reflects my own experience of seeing the bourgeoisie, particularly in a city like Bath, taking their little darlings to school. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Really made me laugh. It was great. So I've got a lot of, a lot of laughter and pleasure over this. It's not all serious and cold. You know, it's, um, it's great stuff. And um, there's also a... A, a little sort of triptych as well called Three Monologues by Lawrence Russell and one of them is a UFO abduction narrative so I don't know maybe I started something again with my short story Saucer Occupant as you can see I'm claiming as much credit as I possibly can but you know, there's lots of great stuff in here I will I will make one point about something I personally wasn't very keen on and I felt it was too obvious no disrespect was created David Manley and um, because technically he's done a good job I just and you know maybe it does need saying because it's a political thing and I'm not on a different political page to David when I say this but there's there's a section called Trumpism a manifesto in which he's very cleverly supplanted Donald Trump's visage onto all sorts of um, pictures here relating to the events we see in the state recently and I have to say personally I wasn't so keen on this. I feel topical things grow old very quickly. 
and I don't see Trump as being an icon in the way that say JFK was so that's something I personally wasn't so keen on but I'm sure a lot of people will, will absolutely love it so um, apologies David it wasn't for me but I'm sure a lot of the fan base will like it um, a lot of this I still haven't read the way I read Deep Ends is I treat it as a magazine I pick it up I put it down I read different things there's lots for me to look at in here yet but um, as ever absolutely beautiful production um, fantastic work um, Rick is is really committed to this project and there are people who like me um, contribute regularly on and off and what have you I hope to get something there next year if I can get back into writing but it's out there now um, it is taking on to get printed because of the pandemic is affecting printing and distribution as I can tell you from my experience in bookshops but deep ends 2021 just the thing um, and you know get out there get it read it and um, support the artists inside because there's some real groundbreaking stuff in here and there's some interesting people there's some fascinating entertaining enlightening and as I say amusing work I loved it this is Outlaw Bookseller signing out probably more ballad to come have a great day and watch out for those giant reptiles.